You know that vintage 60s bass tone which is very dead sounding and almost rubbery? Yes, that one. I want to tell you how you can get that tone pretty easily. A little while ago I got this bass from Sterling and Ernie Ball and since it's a very modern bass I want to use it in this video to prove a point that you can get that vintage sound using my different tips and tricks. And by the way since I got the bass and some strings for free this is considered a sponsored video just so you know that. Okay so the first and most important thing to do to get this sound is to use flat wound strings. Sound wise it's a big difference going from normal to flat wounds and it plays a big role in that rubbery type of tone. So yeah, I'm using my modern bass, but I would say that it's important to use a passive pickup. On my bass, I've turned off the preamp, so it works as a passive one. So that's kind of important to know. And yes, there is a specific person here on YouTube telling you that using a pick when you're playing bass is not a pick. But I would say for this type of sound, I definitely prefer to use a pick. And a good tip there is to use a very soft one. That really helps to get that nice attack when you are playing. And back in the day when they got this sound, some people actually put foam uh, under the strings right next to the bridge to dampen the sound. You can do that. I find it easier just to palm mute since I'm a guitar player. I'm pretty used to that anyway. So mute a lot close to the bridge. That makes a big difference. Myself, I don't have a bass amp anymore, but I plug directly into my interface and I use different bass plugins. You can probably use some free ones that you can find in your DAW. I prefer to use the Positive Grid Bias 2. And another option is to get a good bass DI that can also really help you to get this tone. But before going into my interface, I always use some sort of a compression. I use a pedal. You can probably use a plugin too, but I prefer to use uh, the stuff from Origin Effects. I have found them to be perfect for this. If you have a different compressor laying around, you can probably use that one too. But compression is quite important for this sound. When it comes to EQing, I like to have just a tiny bit of bump in the mids. Other than that, I'm not doing that much to the EQ curve. And something that I just learned, it's nice to add some sort of saturation to your sound. So I'm using a tape plugin and throughout this video I'm going a bit up and down on the amount of gain I'm adding to the signal. I'm basically just adjusting the gain so it works for the different songs. <laughs> And one last tip, I have two basses, one with flat wounds and one with normal strings. The one with normal strings, I'm changing uh, the strings uh, from time to time. I want them to sound a bit fresh. But with the flat wounds, as long as you don't break them, do never, never change them. Never. The more dirt and sweat you get in your strings, the better they sound or they sound more dead, but that's good 
in this case. So there are my tips for the dead rubbery bass sound from the 60s. And since you are here still, I want to recommend this video that I made a while ago. Thank you for watching. Thank you to Ernie Ball for sponsoring this video. I hope to see you in my next one. Bye.